The Frank Haith Show, brought to you by Don Thornton Cadillac, Pepsi, River Spirit, TTCU, The Credit Union, and St. Francis Health System. And now your host, Bruce Howard. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Frank Haith Show. I'm Bruce Howard, joined by head coach Frank Haith, University of Tulsa basketball, and Boy, terrific wins to start the league season against uh, Temple and against Houston. Sanders by a tough one against Cincinnati. But that's life in the American Athletic Conference, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you, you look at our league, but you look at across the country. It, you know, you got, there's a lot of parity in college basketball. Yeah. But our league in particular, I think from top to bottom, it's the best it's been since I've been in the league. Yeah, no doubt about it. And the Hurricane, again, starting with that great win against uh, Temple. We've already seen the highlights of that. This week, we'll talk about Cincinnati on the road and then the great win at home at the rental Center against the Houston. And Cougars. Back with more in a moment. Reggie Jones. I'm a red shirt junior and I'm from Marion, Indiana. A rip drive right down the middle and he hammer dunks it. My goal for this year is to make it to March Madness. Hopefully get an AAC title. I'm bringing a little bit of everything. I'm just one piece of the pie. Yeah. Guys, here, here's what we got here. When I think of team, to trust, together, toughness. And I talked to you about trust. We got love. We love each other. Uh, there's no doubt about it. You guys love each other. Continue to trust each other. You gotta play together. That's big on the road. You gotta play together on the road. You gotta play with great toughness on the road. To win on the road, you gotta have great togetherness, great toughness, because we all we got on the road. Okay? Touch and feel each other throughout for 40 minutes. Okay? Here we go. We're back on the Frank Haith Show. The University of Tulsa, after their win against Temple, now goes on the road to Cincinnati. And boy, that's always a tough place to play, isn't it? It is. And I thought we had the right mindset, Bruce, going in that ball game. Uh, you know, we had played great defensively against Temple, and we went in that ball game. It was it was rugged for first half in terms of offensively, but defensively, we really on point. Yeah, no question. And obviously, Cincinnati's a very good team. They're always one of the kingpins in the American Athletic Conference. And uh, no mistake, this year they are very, very good. Even though they had some early losses, they're clearly a team that was stung a little bit by a loss at Tulane in New Orleans. So they're a team, maybe the Bearcats with their backs to the wall just a little bit. And you see the hurricane coming out and you did come out with that right mindset. It was a really defensive first half, wasn't it? It was, and I, you know, we, we, we did a really good job of uh, keeping those guys in front of us and, uh, and rebounding the ball. And, uh, you know, offensively, you know, we, 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 we were able to get in the paint area. We just, we couldn't continue to finish. And you can see late in this ball game, we don't shoot the ball well and we get some open looks, but, uh, but they were good. They, they pressed up on us defensively, and that's a nice back cut uh, play uh, pass by Elijah and finished by Jariah. Yeah, Elijah, uh, on, really on both of those uh, first two plays, very, very good as he's very getting more aggressive offensively, and there's, there's a good sign, huh? Martin scoring in the paint area against these guys and being aggressive and nice uh, split right there and finishing uh, over his left shoulder, nice jump up. Hurricane up by a score of eight to seven at that point, and now you see Cincinnati up by two. But again, here it is, Martin Zigbanu, and this time he faced up a little bit. Yeah, and attacked him. And you see the score is tied midway through the second, uh, first half. And we're we're just we're just offensively struggling a little bit here, but defensively we're doing well. Uh, nice drive by Dry and finish. Dry a horn with that basket to make it 13 to 12, and a few moments later with the score at three, Hurricane able to drive aggressively to the basket. Darren Jackson on a pump fake, uh, penetrate, uh, finish error. And there's a good ball move right here. Uh, nice, nice jump hook by Manny on that uh, baseline. Emmanuel Ugbo with the basket for the Hurricane and he continues to give you some pretty good minutes, doesn't he? He does, he does, getting better and better. Uh, nice hesitation right there by Elijah. Really good move and uh, we love when he's being aggressive. Yeah, when he gets it to the basket, not only can he finish, but he also can dish it off. And now here's Tulsa on the break. Good finish by Brandon. Good steal first to start the play. And then you can see we're down two there with a minute and a half left to go in the first half. And you can see it's the steal by Brandon Rochelle. Then he gets the return pass and finishes off. And the Hurricane, again, hanging with Cincinnati. This is a close game through the entire first half. Yeah, and they get a second shot uh, here to go up two. We, we, cut, we, we cut it to two, so it's a two-point game. And their last second shot here, they get a stick back to cut it to four. I mean, to give them a four-point lead going in the half. 
Yeah, they tipped one in at the buzzer, a uh, follow shot, and that gave them the 26-22 lead. And coach, as you look at these numbers, obviously you didn't shoot the ball very well, but you played good defense, and there you're hanging right with them. Right, right with them. You know, we defensively we talked about how good we were, but we're right in the ball game. And now we go to the second half in the early moments of the second half. You're down by four, and there's another steal by Brandon Rochelle, results in a basket. Yeah, we're right where we need to be. You know, we good stop to start the second half. We finish in transition. Uh, you know, with two point lead, and we, you know, we just we're, we're we're in a good place right now. And now you see Cincinnati getting the ball inside to their big guy, and he's he's a tough load, isn't he? Yeah, but that was too easy. Too easy. Um, you know, good pass right there, good finish. But that lay was too easy, but we let him get catch the ball too deep. Cincinnati is inching that lead out a little bit toward double digits, but your team keeps battling. Keep battling. You know, the, you know they had a burst there. I think Cumberland hit a couple shots, and you know they're they're preseason our, uh, the preseason player of the year in the league, and but we're still battling. You know, and uh, getting the ball into Martin's that that's a tough layup right there. Boy, you talk about battling. He he was able to struggle through that double team, make the basket, and cut the lead down to seven. And then you see they're getting out in transition now, not having to play against our half court defense. And that, that would it ain't, probably end up going to center transition defense, but good drive there. You see 13 minutes in the game with 10 point lead. Yep, and then it gets down to eight on this one, 43-35 after the dunk by Jariah Horn. Uh, less than 12 minutes to go in the game and you're, you're right there. Right there, and then all of a sudden we just couldn't score. Yeah. And then they started, they started making some tough shots and it's a tough shot and out of bounds play by uh, Cumberland. And you know, when we turned the ball over and they got out in transition and we talked about you know the people playing against our half court defense, but those are the plays that really really hurt us. Yeah, those do hurt, and uh, you can see the 35. Remember, it was 43 35. Now it's 57 uh, 35. So it was a 14 to zero run, and now you're really uh, kind of behind the eight ball. Yeah, we are. But good high low pass there, good finish by Manny. Uh, again, they you know they got they got rhythm uh, and just uh, our undoing defensively, uh, offensively really because we couldn't make a shot. And then, um, and then, then we started pressing. And here's a nice backdoor cut, and Reggie Jones able to finish for you. Yeah, you know, we just needed to do what we can to get uh, score some buckets here, to just keep fighting. And that was the one thing I was really kind of disappointed. We just didn't keep fighting all the way in. You know, once they got the lead. But here you see a couple of nice plays there at the end of the game. Yeah, Darian Jackson continued to fight through the whole game and uh, obviously a disappointing second half for you. And that score really doesn't indicate how that game went, uh, did it? No, no. We just, like I said, we, you know, 49-22 the second half, but it really wasn't that kind of game. Uh, but give Cincinnati credit. They made, they made the plays they need to make. Absolutely. So the Golden Hurricane losing on the road and now getting ready to get back home against a team pick number one in the league, the Houston Cougars coming to the Reynolds Center. Highlights for Saturday's game coming up next. We're back on the Frank Haith Show. The Golden Hurricane, after the loss at Cincinnati, gets ready for a home game against the kingpin of the American Athletic Conference, pick number one, along with Memphis. The, uh, obviously, the Houston Cougars come in, and they, they give you a lot of concern, don't they? You know, one of the first thing we talked about pregame, that you got to rebound the ball against them, and you got to get back and set your defense. They're, they're one of the better rebounding teams in the country, not just in our league, and they play physical basketball. So you got to match your physicality to give yourself a chance, and I thought we did that. Yeah, and Tulsa going up against, obviously, a Houston team, as, as Coach mentioned, rebounding-wise. In fact, they are number one in the nation coming into the game at a plus 12 on the rebounding side, and they play physical, and they get it up and down the court. So lots of things to think about if you're University of Tulsa getting ready for this game, but your team was, was in the right mindset, weren't they? We were. We, we knew we, we, what we had to do from a defensive standpoint and, and physical physicality standpoint. There you see Lawson getting off to a good start. They had their big guy. Guarding Lawson, they had their guards guarding our Brandon and uh, and Dry, but uh, good finish there by Brandon, stealing it, and that was our one of our steals and nice finish in transition right there. Rochelle able to finish it to make it a five nothing lead early, and then Brandon will pop free, and everything is in pretty good shape there, squared and ready to go. Yeah, 0 for 17 in Cincinnati, we make two of our first three threes to start this ball game it was good to see. So Tulsa does throw the first punch in this game. Like to see Eli, Eli do that more. Come off that ball screen, mid range, work on his. He's been working at it, and I think he's capable of being a good mid range shooter. Joiner giving Tulsa at that point a four point lead, now up by two. Nice back cut uh, pass by Dry, finished 
by Darian. Darian does a nice job sneaking back door, doesn't he? Yeah, and that's one of our flow offenses, and, and, but the really good pass by, by Jariah. And here's Houston on the way, trying to get something going, and yet your team really plays good defense. They rotated around, and shot clock violation, that's yeah, great. Yeah, really good defense, cutting off that baseline, rotating. Uh, this kid Mills is a terrific player. Man, he's a young kid, that red-shirted, uh, really good score. Gives Houston the lead, and now you get the ball inside to Brandon Rochelle, and uh, you've devised that a little bit as something that Brandon could do, post a smaller guy up, right? Yeah, we kind of move Brandon around a little bit. Uh, you know, obviously he has ability to shoot that turnaround, Jay, and he's got a good post, low post game. So we do some things to get him in different spots, and that was great execution. And here are the Hurricane up by two, and now with the steal and the layup, up by four. Good execution on uh, our half-court trap stuff, and obviously Darren's got great burst to accelerate through that passing lane. Yeah, you can't put a hump on a pass if uh, Jackson's around. He's going to sniff it out and get it. And here's uh, a lot, uh, Isaiah Hill with a nice shot. Nice, nice jump shot there, and uh, I think Zay's starting to get more and more comfortable with his shot because he is a good shooter. And there's a shot the other way by Giroux, making it 28-27 in favor of Houston. This one went back and forth, and that's a terrific play. Another great pass by Jariah to Jackson. And uh, uh, off the bounce, good catch, good finish. Free throw made the score 32-31, Hurricane leading. And even though there was, it was intense and it seemed defensive, this is a pretty high score approaching halftime. It really is, you know, and... Uh, you know, I think both teams were executing pretty good at this point in time. That's a nice drive. You kind of see the, 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 the versatility in Brandon's game right there. Houston got a free throw toward the end of the half to make it 37-34. What are you thinking at halftime, Coach? I think we're right where we need to be. You know, in terms of rebounding the ball, we did a good job keeping off the glass. We, we needed to just make sure we continue to play the way we're playing. Yeah, and you can see, again, those rebounds, uh, dead, pretty much dead even and Houston only three offensive rebounds in the first half. They get a few more in the second half. And there's the play of the game, I'd have to think. The first three-pointer uh, for Darian Jackson in his career. Well, you see the score. I think they got up to an eight-point lead at that point in time, so we needed a bucket. It was late in the clock. Uh, they fouled him. Obviously, obvious foul and uh, great finish. And I think he gave us a boost for the rest of the guys on the team. Yeah, four-point play made it 42-38. Moments later, you have the ball again. And guess who again? Nice pass by uh, Brandon right there, pivot and finding Darren. And you can see, I think it just ended up being a 10-0 run. Right. And that's uh, Jariah Horn off the transition. And all of a sudden, you're ahead 44-42. What a great run. Good execution, out of bounds play, getting Jariah another three right after that. Uh, and now, we're, now we're, we're right back in the game from an offensive standpoint. And, you know, they doubled Martins. That's a good move by Martins right there. And the uh, Hurricane, again, hanging in there. And boy, a follow shot. What a terrific play by Brandon Rochelle. Uh, as again, this one goes back and forth, runs, ebbs, flows. But boy, when, when Martin Zigbanu can play tough like that and really be aggressive, it opens up for exactly, stuff like that. Exactly, right? exactly. They're doubling him. So Brandon's free to the glass, and he goes and finishes it. And now, as you can see, Tulsa's down by two. And again, tough play for Igbanu. Really good play. I mean, the double team was late getting there, so he was able to split it and get it up and finish it. And the Hurricane, as you can see, down by six again, and a nice job of finding, identifying the double team and finding a man. Yeah, this is a really good pass by Brandon. Left-handed, off the kind of a uh, look away, and obviously Darren with a great finish. So one of the key moments of the game now, down by five, less than two minutes to go, Coach. You're not panicking, but you got to get something done, and uh, it's... Action Jackson again with the basket for you, his third three-pointer. Well, you notice the pass back to, 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 to Brad, uh, Eliza there because he, he wasn't comfortable. Got his feet set, he threw it right back to him, knocked it down. And then a steal, and the Hurricane with a chance to cut into the lead even further, and nice, they get fouled. Nice pump fake finish, and Brandon was 7 for 7 from the line. Uh, Huge. Ties the game up right there with a minute left to win the game. So 61-61, and what, what we're not seeing as much here, obviously, is defensive stops you're getting. And now with the tie game, you have Brandon aggressive to the hole again, and again he gets fouled. Yeah, after ATO uh, play execution there, you got the ball to Brandon, let him go attack, and he gets fouled. 
makes two more free throws. So you're up by two. This is the last gasp effort for Houston. They're driving, trying to get something done. And it's Sasser with a contested three-pointer at the gun. And uh, boy, what a great win for your team. Huh? Yeah, great job by Jariah staying down on the pump fakes before that and then threw out the Sasser. And then, uh, really proud of that, you know, defensive stand. And we missed him one, one and one. Right. And we had needed a stop there. And that uh, showed great toughness there. And you can see what Houston shot in the first half, now how they finished, show you our defense was outstanding there in the second half. 39% for Houston in the game and Tulsa had 46%. And then Darian Jackson with a career high, 19 points for the Golden Hurricane, along with his first three pointers in his career, fueling Tulsa to a big win over Houston at home. In a moment, we'll be back with more on the Frank Haith Show. Guys, that's the way to fight. That's the way to fight. That's the way to, that's the way to fight. Proud of you. Now we gotta go on the road. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, guys, when people, you gotta fight, man. You can never let what happened against Cincinnati ever again. Yes, we gotta fight. When you fight, you give yourself a chance every time you lace them up. We're that good. You're good enough to win this league if you fight every time you lace them up. You just gotta compete every single time. Proud of you. And it's stolen by Rachelle. Rachelle all the way down, left hand layup, yes. And here's a backdoor cut. It goes to Jackson, and Jackson lays it up and in. Throws top of the key. It's Jackson for three, and he hits a three-pointer. Throws right side. It goes Jackson. Another three. Swish. Jackson hits another one. Holy smokes. It's the Don Thornton Cadillac feature segment on the Frank Haith Show. And the question we asked the players was, who's the strongest on the team? What do you think? Well, I think it would be Martin Germani, but if I had to go pick one would be Mars because I think Mars legs and upper body is pretty strong. All right, let's see what the players say. They were asked the question, who's the strongest player on the team? Uh, definitely Manny. For sure, Manny and uh, Martins. Uh, two strongest are going to be Manny or Martins, and I'm going to have to go with Manny on this one. Um, the two strongest on the team is uh, definitely Martins and Manny. Uh, and I mean, I'll take either one of them because I'm, I'm pretty confident in my strength myself. So. Whoever want to have an arm wrestling match, first come, first serve. They don't matter to me. I'd probably say Manny and Martins, and Manny on my right and Martins on my left. Who are the two strongest on the team? I would say me and Martins, and I'd probably win in an arm wrestling match. I'm the strongest on the team, so it really ain't no need for second place. And, um,. So since I'm the only one, I just take my I take myself. <laughs> Martins and Manny are the strongest, and I'm gonna take Manny over Martins. It's two strongest on the team, me number one, and I'll probably go Manny number two. Two strongest. Uh, I mean, you see my guns, so I mean me and probably Manny, and I mean I'm gonna win that, of course. You know, I ain't worried about none of that. As far as I'm concerned, man, it's the African strength. Me and Marty, what's up? I don't see nobody else. The two strongest guys on the team would be me and Manny. And if we had an arm wrestling contest, I'm picking me. We welcome you back to the Frank Hafe Show. And so we take a look at the American Athletic Conference standings, Coach. It is a crazy league. And even the games on Sunday, you know, Wichita State struggled to beat UConn. That was an overtime game. USF gave Memphis everything they can handle. So uh, there's no question this is a balanced league, including the two teams you play this week at ECU and at Tulane. Well, you just talked about those tough games. Well, how about ECU beating SMU this week? Yep. And then Tulane going on a road winning at Temple. And obviously they took Memphis right down to the wire. So Every time you lace them up, you're going to be challenged uh, against a good opponent. And, uh, you know, we got a tough week against two really good teams, and two teams that are probably pretty hot right now, too. Yeah, certainly road wins are hard to come by, and hopefully the Hurricane can come up with a couple of them this week. Again, to you uh, on the road Wednesday at ECU and then Saturday against the Tulane Green Wave. That'll wrap it up for the Frank Haith Show. For the coach, I'm Bruce Howard. So long for now. The Frank Haith Show. Brought to you by Don Thornton Cadillac, Pepsi, River Spirit, TTCU, The Credit Union, and St. Francis Health System.
The Frank Haith Show has been a presentation of Golden Hurricane Sports Properties and a Kane Vision production.